Our legend today is a woman who played a major role in resisting the colonization of her kingdom. Queen Nzinga played a key role in defending Angola against the Portuguese in the 17th century. She was a highly intelligent strategist and skillful negotiator. Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please take a moment to subscribe if you've not already done so. Thank you. Now, like I explained in the um, earlier episodes, poverty and greed in most countries um, which now constitute Europe led their monarchs and um, traders to invest heavily in maritime exploration. They sponsored and equipped mercenaries to go and find lands which had resources that uh, could be exploited in order to save their countries from, uh, from poverty. By the 15th century, Portuguese mercenaries in search of new lands um, to exploit reached the land in no southwestern um, Africa, which is uh, present-day Angola. Now, their intention from the start was to establish a slave route along the southern African coast. Now, the Portuguese mercenaries who first arrived um, there were accompanied by Jesuit priests. When they arrived in uh, Kabasa, which was the capital of uh, Ndongo, um, as the kingdom was known in uh, 1560, when the Portuguese got there. Now, the king at the time was Ungola Kiluanje Kiandambi. He was the great-grandfather of the legend that we're celebrating today, Nzinga. Um, the Portuguese mercenaries and the Jesuit uh, priests tried to bribe and deceived in Dongo uh, people with presents and uh, by claiming that um, they were there to develop trade uh, relations with them on behalf of the king of Portugal. Though he did not believe them, Ungola Kiluanje Kiandambi, like most other African uh, leaders, was a very hospitable man. He allowed them to land but they repaid him by studying the lay of the land and noticing its rich natural resources while plotting how best to um, overtake the land. Unfortunately, Ndongo Kilwangi, who was um, at war with some of his neighbors, made another fatal mistake, a mistake which most African countries continue to make even today. When African countries have internal uh, problems or problems with their neighbors, uh, neighboring countries, we all still look to um, foreigners to help us resolve um, issues or help us fight against our neighbors. The fact that not once has this approach benefited any African country has not taught us that we need to learn to try and resolve our differences without calling on America, Russia, China, or countries in Europe or Arabia to help us. We have not yet learned that a peaceful and prosperous Africa is something that these so-called powerful or wealthy countries will never want to willingly allow to exist. Asking the Portuguese to help him fight against his neighbor was a really fatal mistake made by Nzinga's ancestor. The Portuguese were only too happy to oblige. They returned to Portugal to get uh, only to, uh, uh, to come back with a fleet of ships filled with soldiers. They, however, did not come to help the king as he had requested. Instead, 
they came in the name of the king of Portugal to seize the country by force. The king and his citizens were completely thrown back, but tried in vain to um, defend their land. But by 1575, the Portuguese had taken control of the land and renamed it Angola. They also founded a port city known today as Luanda. Very quickly, the land became invaded by Portuguese merchants, more missionaries, and farmers who poured into the land and the neighboring uh, places the way that wild locusts attack rich farmlands. They then started slave trade on a massive scale, going further into neighboring lands to capture more people in order to supply labor um, to Portuguese plantations that had been set up in Brazil. Now, by the time that Nzinga was born in 1581, her father, Mbandi Ngola Kiluanji, was the king, but the land was controlled by the Portuguese. She grew up seeing how her father tried to resist um, the Portuguese occupation and, and, and the violence imposed throughout the region by the Portuguese. Nzinga was very close to her father. And because she was fearless from childhood and highly intelligent, he allowed her to accompany him into battles against the uh, Portuguese conquistadors. Her father also ensured that she got a good, solid education. And she was also taught to speak, read, and write Portuguese. All of which came in very useful in her in her later life. After her father died in 1617, Nzinga's half-brother, Ngola Mbandi, inherited the throne. Although Nzinga and her brother did not get on very well, he was compelled to send her as his emissary to go and negotiate peace with the Portuguese in Luanda because by the time, uh, because by that time, the Portuguese had virtually decimated the land. The kingdom had been ravaged by their slave raiding, uh, and because farming had been uh, disrupted due to the slave raids, there was starvation everywhere in the land. Uh, the Portuguese, who had installed themselves in the land, wanted to were also eager to negotiate a, a peace treaty because they wanted a way to continue the slave trade, which had become highly profitable um, to them. Ungola Mbandi, Nzinga's brother, who was then king, probably decided to send her uh, to negotiate with the Portuguese uh, representative, the Portuguese governor, because of her ability to communicate in, uh, in Portuguese. On her way to Luanda, she was really very dismayed um, because even though she knew she was going to negotiate uh, for peace, what she observed on the way distressed her a lot. Um, she observed the desolation uh, of the land and went past villages that had been completely uh, sacked and um, the empty villages. She also saw large sheds that were built to hold slaves before they were shipped to um, uh, to Brazil. All of these, you know, kind of must have been playing in her mind um, when she finally got uh, uh, to Luanda. Uh, to Luanda, it must have been a very anguished woman who arrived in Luanda. On arrival in Luanda, the Portuguese governor tried to in intimidate her, but he underestimated her, you know, to his own um, detriment. When she entered the room in which the negotiation was to take place, the governor was sitting on a large throne-like seat 
and had arranged um, for a carpet to be placed on the floor for Nzinga to sit on the ground. In other words, he wanted to make her sit on the floor while looking up to talk to him. Um, being the savvy person that she was, all Nzinga needed to do was to signal to her um, attendant who had accompanied her to the negotiation. The attendant did not need any more any words to know what to do. Um, only she the, the, she immediately crouched on all fours so that Nzinga could sit on her back in an elevated uh, position, um, like the royalty that she was and a superior to the Portuguese governor. I like to think that I like to think that um, the quick thinking and the display of strength by Nzinga and her attendant must have thrown the uh, Portuguese governor, who had not been expecting such a formidable negotiator. To top this, he must have been totally disarmed by her level of intelligence because Nzinga ended up getting him to commit to a twofold um, agreement to withdraw his troops from Ndongo and also recognize its sovereignty. In return, she agreed to open trade routes uh, to the Portuguese. Nzinga was not only a savvy negotiator, but she was also very, a, a very pragmatic person. She recognized that a new era had come and that the Portuguese had gained way too much ground in the region. Um, she then, she, she knew she had to develop some kind of diplomatic relationship with them. So she became baptized as a Christian and took on the name Donna Anna de Souza. However, the Portuguese did not really want any uh, lasting peace. And um, they very quickly resumed their onslaught on, on, on the land and they managed to drive her brother away from his, his kingdom. After he died, Nzinga became the queen. Queen Ungola Mbandi Nzinga Bandikia Ungola was her regal name. During her reign, she was able to extend her authority over the local uh, chieftains and neighboring kingdom of uh, Matamba, which then came under her rule. During the 40 years of, Nzinga's, uh, of Queen Nzinga's uh, reign, um, the two kingdoms of Undongo and Matamba enjoyed some, some level of um, of safety under her protection because she fought valiantly and resisted attempts by the Portuguese to colonize her kingdoms. So powerful did her two kingdoms become under her reign that Portugal under King Pedro IV was forced to renounce any claims that he had on Ndongo in a treaty which was ratified in Lisbon on the 24th of November, 1657. Queen Nzinga died on the 17th of December, 1663, at the age of 82. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sankofa Pan-African series channel. Like our videos and please, Share them with your contacts.